How's it going everybody? Welcome to GHMV Reacts. I am super stoked today because we are looking back at the legendary Helena Cassada in both Elizabeth Taylor's version and Constance Towers. Elizabeth Taylor originated the role and then Constance Towers took over in the 90s when the character returned. This first clip is the very first time we see Helena Cassadine. It took place in 1981. Here we go. Let's watch together. Fresh flowers everywhere. And we'll need another vase over there. Oh dear, I'm afraid that's not the shade she wants. Did you ever see anything like this? She even travels with her own personal memory. Someone dusts this painting. Well, I thought you did that. Do it again. I still see dust on it. I understand Mrs. Cassadine demands absolute perfection. You can't go in there. Bring it back later. <laughs> Madame has just finished her bath and is conferring with her emissary. Kindly inform the kitchen that Madame shall have breakfast shortly. Yes, ma'am. A personal chef is awaiting the menu. Oh, ma'am, the dress that was steamed. My dame has changed her mind. She has no use for it now. Omelet with caviar, freshly squeezed orange juice, champagne, Belgian dark chocolates, and freshly ground coffee. Yes, That's Mr. underlined. <laughs> <laughs> Even back then, she was madame demanding. Madame staff to assemble here in one half hour. Yes, ma'am. Oh, madame wants me to deliver the remaining invitations immediately. The limousine. What about the important one? Oh, not yet. But she will be very upset if I fail to find it. Upset? She'll start a war. Now, come along. Let's get these things here. Oh, you I want you to let them get over there. Legend! And the music. I'm sure you all did your best this morning. And I thank you. Especially those of you who are from Port Charles and new to my service. However, your best was not quite good enough. My bath water is to be precisely 85 degrees Fahrenheit. This morning, it was not. As to my lavender satin sheets, they are to be hand laundered, scented, hand pressed daily. The flowers, Madame permits only sterling roses, 32 inch stems in crystal vases, two dozen in the foyer and four dozen in here. Fresh daily, of course. And a single rose at my bedside on my right. <laughs> I shall have my breakfast now, here by the window. I enjoy the morning sun. You are dismissed. Dang. <laughs> I apologize, madam. Delivering the invitations to your reception took longer than I had hoped. I have one more, Jean Paul. See that Mr. Robert Scorpio receives it at once. Mm. <laughs> I love that music. Oh my god. Oh, so good. I love Elizabeth Taylor. Rest in peace. So, this next scene is when Constance Towers first premieres as Helena Cassadine. This took place in 1998. So, let's watch this one together. Alexis. She knows. <laughs> Helena. I mean, it was a great recast, too. She does look a little bit like an uh, Elizabeth Taylor. Your mother was considered a great singer. I barely listened to her. May I ask how you got him? No, you may not. <laughs> it's just that I am surprised to see you. Really? I thought you'd be expecting me. What I meant was that you've been ill, and I'm very pleased that you've recovered. A lot of people were hoping that I would die, but I continue to defy expectations. <laughs> and you, Alexis, I trust America has been good to you reasonably. 
I understand that the practice of law has proven successful for you. I've been very fortunate. I was also informed that you recently learned about your rather unsavory heritage. It's been a, a very long trip for you. Would you like some tea? I can order from room service. Just hot water and lemon. This is Miss Davis. Uh, can we have some hot water and lemon? Uh, cookies and a pot of black coffee. Thank you. your life. The night your mother died, it was you. The illegitimate daughter of my husband's mistress that I really wanted. Oof. Kristen somehow sensed danger was imminent, so she tied a hair ribbon through the ring and slipped it around the neck of her small daughter and then concealed her. Is any of this coming back to you? I really have no recollection of my mother that night or ever. Well, the good trauma does tend to suppress the memory, but it does return. Sometimes when we least expect it. Do you know more about that night? Your mother was dispatched. The next morning, Nikos found you in her room, silent, staring, clutching the ring. He convinced me to allow you to come live with us. Oh, wow. Oh, he had his ways. As I'm sure Kristen would attest if she could. We created the myth of the poor distant cousin. Because we felt it was the only way and the safest way to deal with you until now. I can understand. How don't. You... Don't attempt to understand me. I don't even understand me. Sorry. No. Tell me all that you have learned about your background. Why? To help me decide if I should spare you. Yikes. My mother was Mikos's mistress. She was talented. He recognized that, so he took her away and set her up as an opera singer named Kristen Bergman. She became a star. I was born. Five or six years later, she was dead. It was five. Exactly. As with everything he did, Mikos's plan to keep you and Kristen hidden was brilliant. But unfortunately, fate was against him. On an unscheduled business trip to London, I noticed an advertisement for a recital given by a new singing sensation, Kristen Burke. I had no plans for the evening. I decided to attend. When she walked on stage, I recognized her immediately. By nightfall the next day, she was dead. I know I should be horrified by this, but the truth is I really feel no connection to that woman or that child, Natasha. Liar. I'm Alexis. I've always been Alexis, and my childhood began on Cassidine Island. Hm. Well, the past is irrelevant. Now I that you have learned. I love that Luke used to call her Natasha as well. The that I made with Nikos to spare your life, as long as you remained unaware, is null and void. I was hoping that you and I might make an arrangement that would be suitable to each other. And what might that be? I want to live. And you need something from me. If you didn't, I would be dead already. Well, Alexis, you are shrewd. 
and your instincts are correct. I want to regain control of my family. From Stefan? <laughs> Stefan, he's not the future. He's merely an opportunist. But Nicholas. Nicholas is the rightful heir. <sighs> and it is he I wish to guide in his duties. Their banter was always, always spot on. I love them. It's a bit sick and a bit sexual, but it worked. Aw, oh, faces of the heart. Almost like she was recasted or something. Last time we danced, you were <laughs> sucking your dinner through a tube. Well, I've wasted nearly a year on my back. Oh no, never a waste, Helena. You on your back? That's not a cure, that's a career. <laughs> now I've tried to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Even Alexis is like, what so, the hell? <laughs> what brings you here? Why are you stalking me this time? My grandson was shot. I'm here to check his condition. I understand that the shooting occurred at your place of business? That's correct. But sadly, I had nothing to do with it. Count your blessings. If Nicholas had died, someone you love might have joined him. Oh, pussycat. You wouldn't slit your own throat? Chills. Yes. Cell phones, Don't man. Tell me that. Do something. They were huge. You and Elena have a fascinating way of relating to each other. <laughs> She's crazy about me. She wants to take me home. Slice the meat from my bones and whip me up into a nice thick falafel. Unfortunately, I am asleep. Oh, that's too bad. I just got here. Oh, by the way, did your wife enjoy her birthday? I remembered to send flowers to her home in Switzerland, but I haven't received a thank you card. She always knew how to spook him. That's one thing. Did she threaten you? She knows that I found out that Nikos was my father. That means you're dessert. I'm the main course. Uh, so good. But yeah, I've always loved Luke and Helena's relationship, especially under Constance Towers. This next clip is when Luke meets Helena for the first time back in 1981. So let's see how different their relationship was. Well, come in, Mr. Spencer. Madame Casadine is expecting you. I know. Fun fact, Tony Geary actually admitted that they had a bit of an affair back then. Okay. 
enamored. <laughs> She's enamored. You insisted on seeing me. That was my only condition for my gift for General Hospital. Thank you for interrupting your honeymoon to come see me. I promised I would. I wanted to see the kind of man you were. The kind of man that almost fooled my husband. Nah, he fooled him. I never fooled him. Huh. But we did share something. What? Awareness. Feelings about starvation and disease. You see, I grew up poor. Your husband said he had compassion for the poor, and yet he only saw us through locked windows in a limousine. But he did see. Yes, he saw. He had a dream. He had a vision. But he had a flaw. I don't want to hear that. I have to live with that. I want you to know that I tried to save him. Then you did see the good in him. She had a bit more... I would not watch any man die, even your husband. She emoted more than he Constance. He said that when he was your age. Showed some emotion there. Are you telling me I'm like him? You share his goals? Some of them. But I see one, especially, in your eyes. What is that? Power. No. No, not power. You see what power buys. Success. Respect. That's what I need. You seem to forget. I was one of the have-nots. Someday. You shall have those things. And when you do, you will realize Mikos did not deserve his fate. She was wicked. Yep, a bit sexual even back then. <laughs> and he was terrified. can't get over that, that like, whatever they call that, that rift that they always play for her. Okay, this next clip is of Constance Towers again. This is short but sweet. This was from back in 2009 when Helena Cassidy returned after a few years of being gone. There's nothing said in the scene, but I feel like it captures Helena's essence perfectly, which is why I chose it. Let's watch together. Right after the hospital got rebuilt. I was so happy when this first, uh, first aired. <laughs> I was so 
such a good return. All right, let's watch one more Constance Tower scene just because that one was so short. This is from back in 2011. It's not really a well-known clip, but I feel like it captures her so perfectly. Just the conversation that she has with Ethan. This is when he was lurking around Windermere when the Lady in White storyline first began. But I loved this scene. And it's one of my favorite scenes of Helena Castanheim with Constance. So let's watch this together. Interesting. We present you with a challenge. Now, I haven't become acquainted with your many talents. Uh, or are you mine? Bold, like your father. Defensive, like your brother, but careless and uninformed when it comes to the enemy at hand. Which makes you reckless, like your sister. Two out of three ain't bad. Why are you here? I was speaking with my brother. Got curious about a few things. You mean her? Looks like somebody already had a problem with her tonight. Well, if I wanted to slash Laura's face or her throat, I would have gone for the real thing. Perhaps I already have. No, you wouldn't do anything to Laura. And you won't do anything to me. You're very sure of yourself for a man with his clothes on. <laughs> Excuse me? Well, you wouldn't be the first man to trade his favors to get himself out of a hazardous situation. No, I'm ready to hear the arguments for and against disrobing. You must have me confused with my father. Not likely. <laughs> so... What did you hope to find in this place? Well, I would say I was looking for answers, but I don't even know what the questions are now that Luke's gone. Luke is gone, and his family is falling apart in his wake. When the last I heard, Luke was stealing diamonds for you. Well, the diamonds weren't what I had hoped for, and Luke has lost some of his luster, too. No, he disappeared after that last meeting. I haven't seen or heard from him since. Hmm. So you came back here to find him? Oh, my life doesn't completely revolve around your family. It mostly does. Tell me about her. Well, now why is she so important to you? She's, she's not even your biological mother. No, but she's Lucky's. She wasn't self-destructive. She could find hope. She could always rise above. Lucky could use that right now. Oh, Lucky needs to find his own strength. And if you think that Laura wasn't self-destructive, you couldn't be more wrong. So what makes you say Laura was self-destructive? <laughs> the man she chose, for one thing. Luke loved her. Luke used Laura as a moral life raft. She was one of those women who didn't mind drowning for the man she cared about, and it drove her crazy. And if that isn't self-destructive, I'd like to know what is. Not big on love, I see. Love? Love is a weakness. You loved. Your children, at least. I hope. I loved a son. You had two. Now I have none. You still Liar. have Nicholas. Oh, my was darling the Nicholas. He's off on a quest to find himself. Well, if he's not here, then that does beg the question. Why are you? I don't need to explain myself to you. Ah, uh, but we were hitting it off so nicely. Well, at least you're not her son. She destroyed Stavros and Stefan. So maybe you're here to return the favor. The 
The Spencers seem to be imploding quite impressively on their own, thank you. You know, I've... I've misplaced something. I thought I might find it here. Now, the boys, they brought so many things from the compound in Greece to fill this place. But in the end, all they brought were ghosts. Right. You believe in ghosts? I believe in the manifestation of emotions. Like love and kindness? Oh, love and kindness, they fade. I'm talking about something that, that resonates like lust and revenge. Something that darkness can gather around and stick to, like dust. Now, I'm finished here. And you should be too. You know, escaping me is one thing, but escaping the, the brooding presence that fills these walls, that's another. Okay, is this some creep fest to keep me from scaling the fortress walls again? No, oh, this isn't a fortress. No, this is a tomb. Oh, there are things that wrestle and scurry around in the darkness, looking for light to latch onto. Looking for light to consume. Okay, so where is all this coming from? From living as long as I have. From paying attention to my senses, there's, there's more in this world than you know. Things that even I fear. And if you have any sense, you'll fear them too. What you can't see can hurt you. Well, that sounds like a challenge. Or an epitaph. What, so that's it? You're just gonna leave? The things I was looking for, they aren't here after all. Like, uh, like this? Keep it. You might need it. Right, to fight off the ghosts. She played these scenes so well. I loved it. <sighs> This last one I thought we'd have a bit of fun. This is, once again, Elizabeth Taylor's version of Lena Cassidyne. But, these aren't ordinary scenes. These are bloopers from her time at General Hospital. I haven't watched this in a while, so I'm excited. Let's watch it together. I 
have seen General Hospital. <laughs> Mrs. Mikos Kasadai. <laughs> I can't get over that chime. I have seen General Hospital and the University, and I approve. As my husband would have approved. Misa Mikos Kasadai. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even Elizabeth Taylor could mess up. Mrs. Mikos Kassadine. I wonder if she could hear this music because it's weird that they're playing it over and over again for the blooper, right? I have seen General Hospital and the University, and I approve, as my husband would have approved. Mikos Kassadine had a deep and ab abiding love. I said, Kassadine. That's right. That's right. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I see darker. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not used to acting. <laughs> I would like you to know that I tried to save your husband. Then you did see the good in him. I saw... I don't know what I saw because I'm up. Thank you very much. That was great. Wasn't it wonderful? 
Elena? Dad! Oh! It's been a long time. Yes, it has. She worked with and Noah Drake as well. Hardy, our chief of staff, Dr. Alan Quartermain, Dr. Rick Weber. Hello. Gentlemen, Mrs. Mikos Cassidy. Dr. Weber, the father of the bride-to-be. Yes, that's right. Please convey my regrets to your wife. I was indisposed when she tried to read me in uh, Greece. <laughs> I screwed I that up. Just <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> I'm a stage actress now. <laughs> oh, that was so, so good. Elizabeth Taylor was hilarious. Rest in peace, Elizabeth Taylor. So, that's the end of this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There is one more Wednesday in March, which I wasn't aware when I first started, but that's fine. So I've decided that next Wednesday, we are going to watch scenes from the original Valentin Cassidyne story from back in 2009. I... When I think of Valentin now, I'm just kind of like, oh, they ruined him so much. Like, he's a, he's a fine character, but he's not the character that clearly the original writers had plans for. So I'm stoked to show you guys, if you've never seen the original Valentin Cassidyne story, we're gonna pick some of the highlights from it. I hate that it was dropped, and the only reason why it was dropped is because James Franco wanted to be on the show, so they just tossed that story out in favor of a character that was obsessed with Jason. I was like, we were about to get like the best end game kind of Cassidyne story ever because he, well actually, you know what? We'll explain it next week, <laughs> just to get into it more, otherwise I'll be ranting forever. So if you liked this video though, give it a big ol' thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, and I will catch you guys this weekend for a General Hospital After Show. Peace out.